All right, I haven't done one of these videos in a while, but uh, I figured I would record a few clips of the progression of installing DCC sound and a bunch of lights into this Atlas A uh, Amtrak AEM7. So um, this is the older style run, which came DCC ready, but it had incandescent bulbs. Um, this notably had non-functioning strobe lights. So um, the idea of this is to redo all the electronics and add more functioning lights. So um, yeah, so this is uh, how it looks currently. I wasn't planning to make a video on this. That's the reason why there's not much background, but just to show you guys how it's looking right now. So uh, the original headlight setup was an incandescent bulb for the headlight, a red LED for both of the uh, rear lights, and also wired in series was this emergency light. So basically all three of these red lights would come on at once, um, even though this is technically the emergency strobe. Uh, the number boards also light up along with the headlight, and then finally the strobes. Or sorry, the, the, the yeah, the um, number boards are light up with the headlight with the also bulbs, and then the the strobes would not work at all. Um, my goal here is to basically individualize every single one of these lighting outputs, and even have separate operating strobes. So I am I just installed uh, LEDs into each of the four corners. I actually just added black paint to it to uh, avoid the light from bleeding and going into the number boards and such. But um, in order to sell these lights, I just used micro SMD LEDs because I had some of those spare on hand and I glued them face uh, face up um, into those corners. And then I painted the outside with very thick black paint to prevent light bleed. Um, and so that way I can have individual strobes. Uh, this Locksound V5 decoder has 10 function outputs. There's a lot of function outputs. Um, and so I have it currently set as one function output uses the headlight, another for the rear light, uh, one for all four strobes because I want them to flash individually. I have one for the markers on each side, so that's two more function outputs. I have uh, all four number boards wired up as one uh, because I figured if the engine is going forward, um, it are, the number boards will always be on no matter which direction the engine is going, so I have them all wired up together. And that only leaves one function output for each of the emergency strobes. So the emergency strobes will activate um, on both sides if I do turn the function on, but Honestly, that was just kind of like a bonus thing because I really didn't need them because emergency strobes are rarely ever used in real life. I mean, I've never, I've only seen like maybe one video of the emergency strobes actually on. That Those only turn on when the engine goes into emergency, which is not very common. So yeah, but this is more of a gimmicky thing. So I figured I'd add, you know, just combine the two into one instead of using two function outputs for a function that I would realistically never really use. So yeah, that's the 10 function outputs. They're all, uh, it's basically designed so I can maximize the amount of lights I can have individually controlled. And yeah, it really helps that these things don't have ditch lights. Um, the Atlas AEM7s were the pre-modernization ones without ditch lights, so that makes it very easy. Otherwise, I need to use four more function outputs for ditch lights, and that's a real pain. <clears throat> Anyways, um, in order to wire all of these, I had to remove the original DCC ready board because that took up a lot of space. And if you couldn't tell here, this is the roof. So this literally touches the top of the shell so this is the very top so you can see there's very little clearance and i basically had to remove the original dcc ready board because otherwise i'd have no space to put a decoder let alone a speaker let alone a speaker sorry um for the decoder i decided to just throw wire resistors directly onto the decoder board itself <coughs> excuse me <clears throat> anyways i had to wire them directly onto the board itself um, and this basically just makes it much easier for me to solder things onto instead of having to solder each wire individually onto the board. I do not plan to add Keep Alive because there are eight pickups on this engine already. And while it would be nice, I don't think, I think putting Keep, keep Alive onto every single engine is just kind of pointless and yeah, anyways. Also, there's, there's just not enough space in this engine, simply. Um, I, so, and on this side, I removed this block. So this block was actually also on this side as well. Um, and I just re I removed it and kept the screws. And that's because I want to put the speaker on this side. Um, so this speaker basically almost touches this. There's very little space inside this engine again. And Atlas really filled this thing up with weight. So I had to unfortunately remove one of these weights on this side uh, to accommodate the speaker. But that's okay. Um, and this engine is still very heavy. Now, you might be wondering what these things are for, and that's the original lighting setup. So there was, um, the headlight would look something like this. There would be two, this would hold two lights. This top hole would hold the red marker lights, and the bottom would hold the, LED, the incandescent bulb for the headlight. And then these three top would be, the middle one would be the red for the emergency strobe. As you can see, that little light bar here. 
and the outer two would be incandescent bulbs for the mark for the number boards as you can see in there um since i am removing it on this side i'll have to find some other way of um you know fitting the lights in here without um without and also you know cover them with light boxes so they don't bleed into each other um but yeah, that'll be that'll be interesting for sure um but yeah that's that's what's coming along right now that's what's looking like um because i have 10 lights actually way more than 10 but 10 lights um you know all of them have to have their red positive wire all be wired to the blue common wire and that's actually what this is for. So this one little soldering pad right there is supposed to accommodate all of these blue wires, the, the, the red positive wires. And so I, I created this weird like shape squiggly thing. This way I can solder four individual wires onto that one spot. And that, make, that makes it a little bit easier for me. I also have this other blue wire, which I can solder other things too. But yeah, it's a very complicated decoder install currently. And uh, I'm still working things out. I did get you know everything mounted properly. I have this decoder position like this um, just because this this huge board here in the back i don't know i believe that's a diode uh it really sticks out that's probably the part on the decoder that sticks up the most and as you can see here if i place it like this it barely clears that flywheel uh but this way i can have even less clearance on top which is good um i also have this piece of styrene here um this is just to prevent the wires from getting sucked into the flywheel that's underneath um so i just taped this piece of styrene on there and that really helps so yeah anyways that's what it looks like right now and hopefully i'll have an update for you for when it's mostly complete so stay tuned one improvement i wanted to make was make the ink the headlights and marker lights brighter so this is the original housing um and as i said the top held the marker light and the bottom held the led or the head the headlight uh which would basically both be pointed forward just like this and then a clear piece of plastic would take the light from the top and bring it into the lens uh, in an L kind of shape. The problem with this approach is that, you know, LEDs are designed to be uh, basically, instead of shining light into all directions, it's basically focused. There's kind of a lens which focuses it and brings it so the light only goes forward out the front. And in this case, because uh, the light is shining, is pointed directly into the, you know, the, into the wall here, much, much of the light is be basically being wasted into black plastic. That is why for this particular approach, I painted the back of it white, as you can see there, the inside of that white. And also, I modified my LEDs. Uh, I also replaced, you know, the original head LED with a, with a uh, you know, LED, or original bulb with an LED here. But this is the original red LED. And as you can see here, I, I basically filed down a 45 degree angle. And so when this slides in now, basically light will hit that 45 degree wall and bounce up. And along with the white back, basically means that more of the light could shine upwards. Um, yeah. And then the LED here, as I said originally, it was a bulb. This LED has been shaven down heavily, as you can see here. The top has been shaven down. And the sides here, the left and right sides. Uh, I left this side flat, but this has been shaven down. And this is basically designed, so instead of, again, being instead of being just put in vert straight in, now I have it so it angles up. So now this LED will fit right in. And as you can see, now it's facing upwards. So now a significantly more amount of light will go through and hopefully make the headlight brighter. So that's just two um, improvements I decided to make. And hopefully it will show in the final, in the final uh, result. All right, about almost four hours later, <laughs> I've been just working slowly watching some uh, TV show in the background. But anyways, um, yeah, this is almost done. I just need to finish the solder, so, final soldering and I'll be ready. So um, I got the headlight and front marker lights uh, and rear marker lights ready installed. Um, that basically handles all four of the front um, function outputs, the headlight, rear light, aux1, aux2. And now I'm going to be adding all the accessory um, um, function outputs. And that will basically be all the lights from the shell. This will basically be very convenient. So all the function outputs in the front will be on the body. We body mounted, and then this will be these six will be basically all the lights from the shell. So that includes the number boards, the emergency lights, and then the strobes. Um, so all these wires, and also the speaker wires, I gotta wire those too. Um, so that's all that is really left. I just need to install them now. Um, note that I have all these LEDs wired up. You can see the capped on tape to prevent it from touching the diecast frame. Um, but these wires, these LEDs are wired up basically, so they all touch. So all of the um, all of the positive commons come to, you know, are connected together. 
and then the negative you know wires of each led has a separate light have, has a separate wire uh, which all connects together so that's the idea of everything here and yeah now it's just final assembly basically tying up all the wires um combining all the number board the four number board leds together combining the two um the two uh, emergency strobe lights together and then wiring each of these single strobe lights these very thin wires into you know all of these resistors and that's pretty much it i'll probably show you the final result before i put everything back together all right and that is it so it's not the prettiest looking thing um but fortunately all this will be cleared out of the way and it won't affect the performance because it's not going to touch the flywheels or anything like that in fact this resistor grid right here is going to protect everything from the flywheel which is very useful but yeah everything's done um i soldered the very fine wires last and i put you know um heat shrink tubing on every other wire um and i also you know make sure that it won't touch any of the metal sides which is very important because you know you want to insulate it from the die cast frame that's very important um, so yeah, that's everything else is insulated. So there should be no shorts. Um, as you can see, I used up all four slots of the blue wire and the other blue wire here. I ended up just only using this one side. So that's it. But, uh, yeah, so I'm going to put the shell back on and hopefully nothing explodes, <laughs> but I'm going to put the shell back on. I'm going to put it through the lock programmer, uh, upload some AE M7, uh, sound files and yeah, we'll see how it goes. All right, and now the engine is complete. So um, I programmed some custom sounds in, and of course I added the um, AEM7 sound file um, from Lock Sound. Um, so unfortunately, you know, ESU's AEM7 files are from their previous V4 sound files, and they didn't have a V5, you know, most modern version. So the sounds are supposedly a little bit more basic, but honestly, they sound really, really good. Electric engines don't make that many sounds anyways in the first place. So honestly, I'm really satisfied with it. But that being said, let me show you the final results. So if I turn the engine on. So we got... Okay, there we go. <laughs> so we got the bell. We got the whistle or a horn. And then so now we got the lighting functions. So to explain, um, the stock factory Atlas um, lighting outputs would basically have the headlight and number boards all be wired together. So if the headlights and the number boards, you know, on each side is basically they're both connected. So the headlight number boards would light on this side or they turn off. Um, and then the marker lights would come on on the opposite side. And that is usually, I don't know if that was wired directly to the you know the headlight and number boards uh but i think it might, it might have been separate but basically there's not much control over the lights the emergency strobes were not functional and the strobes were individual so that was the previous lighting functions from the factory installed am7s and mine is upgraded because i have individual control now of all the lights so the headlights are individually wired from the number boards which are individually wired from the marker lights so i can turn each of them on and off however i choose uh, the, the strobes are all independent, so each strobe has four, you know, it's each of them has a lighting output, so there's four total. And then the emergency beacons also light up. Um, I have, that being said, I did wire both the number boards on each side together because, you know, usually the number boards are always on anyway, so there's no reason to turn only one side on and the other side off. And just because I only had 10 function outputs, uh, just to save a function output, I, I wired both of the emergency beacons together, so, you know, the, the, if I turn the emergency beacons on, they will both come on on each side. Uh, but everything else is very individual, so um, I can show you now. Headlight. Um, there is the markers, which come on on the other side. They're very dim, but they are there. Then I have the strobes, which they flash individually. Then I have the number boards. Oh, there you go, the number boards. Um, and so if I change direction, the marker lights on this side turn on, the headlight and strobes come off, and the other side's strobes and headlights come on. So that's the idea now. Um, and finally, the emergency light, which I actually, um, it's function 13, and I actually added the uh, emergency brake release sound to it. So if I turn on function 13, that's an emergency app application sound. The light turns on, and then I have, if I turn it off, You can hear the air being regenerated. So yeah, that's all the lighting outputs now. As I said, I also added some custom sounds. So um, 
not really that many custom sounds. Really, all I did was um, add the, you know, the, the emergency sound. And then also, I made a custom uh, passenger announcements uh, sequence. Um, instead of recording, like, you know, real passenger announcement sequence, which are, you know, on YouTube are very, very noisy, um, or finding some, like, other model video on YouTube, like an MTH one, um, I actually decided to simply just, um, I decided to actually just simply do some research and figure out the exact like dialogue, like the words that they use for the announcements um, through YouTube videos. And then after doing some research on that, I put those words into an AI generator, like voice generator, text to speech generator, which spoke it all out. Um, I tried to find you know the voice of a lady, which was very similar to the Amtrak announcements. And then I took the audio from that, which I recorded, <clears throat> put it in Audacity, added up some reverb, changed the treble, you know, changed some of the equalizer sounds. So now it sounds like a pretty decent, um, you know, passenger announcement. So if I have the engine running and say it's stopping at a station soon, I turn on function four. Now, these announcements are very long. That's kind of what I learned about Amtrak announcements in real life is that they're very long and very wordy. Um, so I'm not gonna play the last one, but basically there's three. It's The first one is the engine coming into the station, saying it's arriving. The second one is saying starting boarding. The last one is like a final call. Um, so there's three audio recordings total. And if the, if the engine is actually not moving at the very start, and you press function four, it will skip the very first one and it will just start straight off as, you know, now boarding and then now departing. So yeah, anyways, that is the, all the special sounds. So yeah, this engine is now very much complete. Um, I think it sounds great. I think it looks great as well. I do have some coaches I'll couple up to, uh, but I'll probably make a separate video of just the engine running, um, just because I like to divide them up. Some people don't like to see the progress and they just like to see the engine, the final you know, result. So I'll make a separate video just for them. But yeah, that's the final result. I think this engine looks really great now. It sounds great. ESU, of course, does a fantastic job on all their diesel and electric um, sounds. So yeah, very happy with the result here. Um, I just need to you know, fix a few of the detail, like physical appearance things, like uh, one of the windshield wipers was missing, one of the sh stirrup steps was missing. And also this blue is a bit too bright, so it definitely will need some <laughs> weathering. But uh, yeah, this thing turned out really well, I thought, and I wanted to share with you guys. So I hope you guys enjoyed the build process. I, I really enjoyed it. It was kind of frustrating wiring all the wires up. I was very nervous that I'd short something out by accident, you know, like have one of the wires accidentally touch something else. I mean, I did a very thorough job in insulating everything to prevent shorts. Um, but yeah, I think they turned out really, really well. And so yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, please let me know your you know comments and opinions down below. I'll be sure to answer them, or at least I'll try. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.